Yeah, so we're excited to have Chris Benda, aka the Illinois Botanizer, to present for us. Um, so Chris is the uh, is a botanist and past president of the Illinois Native Plant Society. Uh, he's currently a researcher at the Southern Illinois University, where he coordinates the Plants of Concern Southern Illinois program and teaches the flora of Southern Illinois. So besides working at uh, SIU, he conducts botanical field work around the world. I know he's been to Hawaii many, a couple of times now, very jealous of that. Uh, teaches a variety cl of classes at the Morden Arboretum and leads nature tours at camp, um, how do I say this? On, on the song. Uh, on the song, okay, thanks. Uh, he has research appointments with the University of Illinois in Argonne National Laboratory and is an accomplished photographer and author of several publications about natural areas in Illinois. He has an awesome website, <laughs> uh, www.illinoisbotanizer.com. And I particularly really like your um, like natural community uh, game that you have on your website. It's pretty awesome uh, where you can connect like different management practices and species to, to natural communities. It's super cool. Um, anyways, I'm really excited that Chris is, is, is going to present to us, and I think we could ha learn a lot from the program uh, that he manages and maybe yeah. some of that. Some of that. Um, so I'll let you take it from here, Chris. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm actually uh, headed to Hawaii for my sixth trip uh, on Sunday, so lucky me. But uh, I'm here today to talk about the Plants of Concern program here in Illinois. So this is a uh, community science rare plant monitoring program. And this is actually the fourth time that I've given a talk um, on this topic. And on some of the other times, I had a little, little more time, and so I started to I showed the video um, that's at our website, plantsofconcern.org. It's about six minutes long, so I encourage people who are interested to go to plantsofconcern.org and, and watch the very well-produced video that explains a little more about the program as well. I have a lot to talk about, so I'm going to go pretty fast here. But um, again, my name is Chris Benda, work in Southern Illinois. Um, the Plants of Concern program is a partnership between the Chicago Botanic Garden and Southern Illinois University. Um, you learned about other things that I do there. So as I'm sure most people are aware, Illinois has seen a lot of habitat destruction, alteration, et cetera, like most of the country. Uh, it's estimated that there were 22 million acres of prairie in the prairie state. And about 2,200 acres is considered to be in a pristine or nearly pristine natural condition. So one one hundredth of a percent, not very much. Um, so Illinois has seen drastic landscape changes. And of course, that has implication for our native plants. Um, I think it's good to acknowledge that um, there have been many people who peoples who have, you know, uh, been in North America and ones that precluded uh, Europeans were a uh, loose confederation of tribes here, uh, many different ones here in Southern Illinois. To acknowledge that. We do have um, a lot of public land in Southern Illinois, and this map shows a little bit about that. So we have the Shawnee National Forest, which is about 290,000 acres. That's in the brown. We have two national wildlife refuges, um, Crab Orchard there is to the north in blue, and then the scattered blue to the south is the Cypress Creek National Wildlife Refuge. And then, of course, we have several large state-owned properties like the Cache River State Natural Area. And so collectively, there's lots of places to view plants and, you know, honestly, for plants to live in the environment. So that's, that's one thing that is really enjoyable, I think, about living in Southern Illinois. And if you watch the video, they will quote this um, paper that said one third of all plants may be at risk of extinction. It's kind of a big reason for doing plant monitoring and the Plants of Concern program. Some of these are fairly obvious, but of course there's many threats to native plants. Sort of, first of all, is plants need places to live. 
And if we look at the landscape around Chicago, there's not a lot of places for plants to live in this kind of environment, unless perhaps you're a tree. Um, so that's sort of obvious thing. We look at fragmentation effects as well. Uh, in Jackson County, which is where Carbondale is, Southern Illinois University, my home county, uh, we see a fair amount of you know, dark green, which is our forested block. So the fragmentation in, in Jackson County is not too terrible. But if we go up to Champaign County, where the University of Illinois is in central Illinois, you can see all these squares, all the sections are very, um, you know, there's lots of roads, they're all farmed, and you see the big city there in the middle. So there's immense fragmentation happening in Champaign County. And of course, you go up to Cook County, it's a whole nother ball game there with the urban sprawl and uh, very little places for contiguous land to harbor native plants. We also have, of course, the invasive species concerns that were mentioned you know, earlier, bush honeysuckle is one that is pretty prevalent uh, throughout Illinois and pretty much any place where there are trees. There's an understory of bush honeysuckle. Uh, Japanese stillgrass has really been taken off as well. Um, I live in a country club where we collectively have 400 acres. And so I've seen just on our own property an explosion of stillgrass in the last, you know, several years even. So that's concerning. There's also climate change effects to take into consideration. And what actually is kind of interesting in regard to this with Southern Illinois is that our rare plants may benefit from climate change. You know, that's anticipated the climate is going to warm. And so in Southern Illinois, we're at the Northern extent of a lot of Southern species. So as the climate warms, those species may be moving farther North and becoming more common in Southern Illinois. So that may be beneficial in that regard, but of course, in the northern part of the state, um, where we have the program occurring as well, um, plants are also going to be moving farther north. So that may not be as good for the rare plants in that region. So Plants of Concern uh, was started 20 years ago. We actually had our 20-year anniversary. Um, it was, it's uh, been run out of the Chicago Botanic Garden in Northeast Illinois for those 20 years. And just this last year, um, with a large anonymous donation, they were able to do a, a number of things, including expand the program to Southern Illinois. So I was hired in January uh, to implement the program. So we're almost a year into things. And what's really um, I want to highlight about this is a good example that kind of you know justifies or explains the program is in Cook County, the Cook County Forest Preserve District has over 500 rare plant subpopulations. So if they wanted to annually monitor all of these with their four biologists, it would be impossible. So the idea is to you know, get the help of community scientists, volunteers that will be trained and will annually go out on their own to monitor rare plant populations. So that's kind of the, the gist of things. And I, I spoke to, um, the Cincinnati Wildflower Society recently, and now Kentucky Native Plant Society, and I've talked, spoken, of course, to the Illinois Native Plant Society. So this is something that would be interesting to see either, you know, um, created in other states or perhaps even a larger sort of uh, Midwest plants of concern type program. So it seems like there's lots that to, of expansion that can happen here. So we monitor rare and listed species, listed either as federally threatened or endangered or state threatened or endangered. But one of the things that I really enjoyed about the program is um, I was given a lot of flexibility when I was hired to design things. So I was able to choose what counties to include and I included uh, all the unglaciated, any county in Southern Illinois that has unglaciated terrain, that's 14 counties. And then I developed the list of plants to monitor. So, as I said, we have federally threatened or in, and endangered. In fact, in Southern Illinois, we only have one federally listed plant species. That's Mead's milkweed, and it occurs at a couple sites. It's very rare. Um, but we have a number of Illinois threatened and endangered species. I think there's 374 species statewide. So any of those that occur in the southern part of the state are included, like the early saxifrage, Micranthes virginiensis. And then some things that are of regional uh, interest or perhaps are rare and just aren't listed for whatever reason, like leatherwood, Durga palustris. 
And of course, we are providing this data for conservation. Um, the Natural Heritage Department, Natural Heritage Division at the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, they maintain the database of rare plants. So that's kind of the central location for all of this information. And that's where um, our data will eventually make it. So that's excellent. And sort of a quick little thing about why we do annual monitoring. This is the shoreline of Lake Michigan up in Lake County. And Lake Michigan has been experiencing higher than normal lake levels for many years, which is causing a lot of erosion. Um, there's actually several dynamics at play here, but you can see from 2012 on the left to 2018 on the right that we're losing shoreline. And those polygons are where rare plant populations once occurred, things that grow on the beach. Um, we don't have a lot of beach in Illinois, so a lot of those species are rare, and, and you can see that they're underwater and they're not going to thrive very well there. So with annual monitoring, um, we can keep an eye on the situation and in some cases um, propagate plants and put them elsewhere. You know, it's a very drastic approach, but in some cases that has been done and is needed. So I mentioned we had a, there was an anonymous gift that allowed this new community science initiative, including expanding the program to Southern Illinois. This is a two year term position with the hope and expectation. I think that we will find a new funding source to continue it indefinitely. Um, but also this um, donation was used to make the video, which I mentioned is on our website and to produce a mobile app and online training and update to the website. So the, on, the training we used to do in person, which has a lot of value as you can imagine, um, but it's also limiting. And so we moved the training online, which obviously was very beneficial for the pandemic period. Um, so people can go on to the website and do the training and get you know, trained up that way. Now the mobile app is what I'm really excited about. I was a little hesitant. Um, I kind of like paper forms, I always have, and I would print off these paper forms and fill them out. And when I finally embraced the mobile app, I thought, this is amazing. I don't know why I've ever used a paper form in my life. No, <laughs> but honestly, this is an app that you download and you go, you can, you can do all the data entry in the field, including your GPS points. You can do it all on your phone. So it's really amazing. And it's something that we've talked about if there are other states that want to um, have a similar program that they could use the app as well. In fact, we've even talked about having a uh, biologist at the state level use the app when they're out and find rare plant populations. So you have to generate the assignment ahead of time and you have to have a cellular connection to get that assignment <clears throat> to access it on your phone. But once you've done that, when you're in the field, even if you don't have a cellular connection, you can do all the data entry. You just can't submit it. You can wait and submit it once you get cellular or Wi-Fi, which, you know, in Southern Illinois is an issue. We don't have strong cell service throughout the region. Um, so I really like the mobile app. It's so amazing to get home at the end of a long day and know that the data entry is all taken care of already. Um, and then, of course, I mentioned we updated the website, and that's really slick as well. So plans of concern, you know, we'd love to have it statewide, but um, that's not possible yet. So as I mentioned, it's been in Northeast Illinois for 20 years and then expanded to Southern Illinois starting this last January uh, and 14 counties there delineated as you know, Southern Illinois. So when we go to um, a rare plant population, of course, we have the extent, where are the plants located? And again, we use that GPS on our phone. You count the plants, get an idea of how many, what percentage are reproductive, record the associate species and any uh, imp in impacts like invasives or any management that's known to be done, directions on getting to the site, et cetera. What I actually have been doing is tracking my uh, path on my phone and then I can upload that to uh, GIS and I can make a map for that can be used on the Avenza app. So if somebody was to go back to the site in another year, they can download the PDF map that I created, see the tracks that I put on there and just literally follow my footsteps to go to these sites and really access them you know, easily. Because in Southern Illinois, some of the sites are large or they're far from where you can park. And so navigation is really an issue where you know, in Cook County, you can pretty much drive right up to whatever you want to look at and have a short walk and be there. So those are things we're doing there. 
Um, so quickly here, I want to mention some of the highlights of this year. So I'm going to just fly through some of the habitat types and rare plants we have in Southern Illinois, like limestone glades, or these small forested openings that of course are becoming encroached with red cedar and, and you know, natural succession. Um, we have meets milkweed. We have Matilia obliqua is rare, the climbing milkweed, blue sage, salvia azuria, and oh, my favorite Hexelectra spicata. Sandstone cliffs are also common in Southern Illinois, where we have things like uh, Hylotelphium telephioides, which is this formerly sedum. Um, there are cliff club moths there, Hupersia, Parophila. Ooh, the filmy fern is one of my favorites, Vanden Boschia, Boschianum, and Femoranthus parviflorus, the small flower, famed flower, those all on sandstone. And then of course, the wonderful French's shooting star, Primula Frenchii, once thought to be endemic, to Southern Illinois, but it can be found in several other adjacent states, including Alabama. But beautiful one. We have the mother load, I like to say, of the French shooting star. Uh, we have these acid gravel seeps in you know, extreme Southern Illinois, Polk County and Massac. And we get things like Carex Atlantica, uh, the star sedge. We have Platanthera clavellata, it's an orchid, and Rexia mariana, the meadow beauty. Now, streams are interesting. We don't have a lot of plants that really grow in the stream, but we do have this neat one, the Plantago cordata, heartleaf plantain. There's maybe 10 locations for that in Southern Illinois. It does occur actually in other parts of the state as well. And then the really rare green trillium, I'll tell you about in a second. Floodplain forest swamps, Hydrolia uniflora is rare. There's four locations I found for that this year. Uh, talk about that in a minute. And then of course, this one here, Oxalis illinoisensis, uh, discovered and described in Illinois by John Schwegman, our former state botanist. Really lovely little sorrel. And then we also have the silver bells, Helesia tetraptera, Styrax americana, Clematis crispa, a number of that this year, and Amorpha night tens. All right, in upland forest, some other interesting things, but I really want the little amount of time I have left, want to talk to you about some finds this year. So Northeast Illinois in 20 years, they've got a lot of volunteers involved, a lot of species monitored, a lot of sites visited. In Southern Illinois, just this year, we've had 38 volunteers we've uh, taken into the field. We've monitored 92 species, 168 sites for a total of 304 EOs. So one species monitored at one site, that is one EO. So 304 um, from this, this field season, is a number I'm very proud of. So some of the neat things that we found here in the remaining five minutes, uh, Asplenium resilience is a rare spleenwort fern. It, I'd never seen this before. It seemed like it was near extirpation in Illinois. Very little was known about it or seen in the last 20 years. And we went to one site and found hundreds of them, which motivated us to find all five known locations for this plant and um, confirm its extant in all of them. So that was really exciting. We did that in February when this is really conspicuous and of course the temperatures are nice. And so that was very motivating to do that. Um, same with Micranthes virginiensis. I'd never seen early saxifrage before and it's only in Hardin County in Illinois and not only only Hardin County but only along the Ohio and sandstone ravines of Hardin County very localized, but within those habitats, super common. I counted probably 50,000, I mean, estimated 50,000 flowering plants. I mean, all the sandstone exposure had just loads of this. So it, it really is one that's made me think about what is a rare plant? If there's 50,000 flowering stems, but only in a small localized area of the whole state, is that really endangered or rare? I'm not sure. And so it's been interesting to think about those things. Carex nigromarginata was one that was only known at three sites that I visited all three back in 2013. Um, and this is one that I learned well when I worked in Missouri. It, the perigenia are shorter than the leaves. So that excludes a lot of other uh, Carex, but they flower in April and the perigenia fall off very quickly. And so it's one that you can only identify for about a month of the year. And I think that may be why it is so... Um, there aren't many occurrences listed. So this summer I found 10 potential new locations. Now, 
I didn't have any parogenia, so I couldn't be sure. I'm going to revisit them in April, but I have a search image for this. I am confident, and, and I, I'm pretty sure we found a, a good number of new locations for Carex nigra marginata. Also exciting was Trillium viridi. This only occurs in Illinois and Missouri. In Missouri, it's actually doing quite well or well enough. In Illinois, it's very rare. There were only two extant populations that I was aware of in Southern Illinois. One of them was on private land along a drainage. And I went there and there was, you know, I think we counted about a hundred or so. Then a friend told me he had worked on a property downstream from there 20 years ago. And he thought he saw a plant along the creek where the driveway goes by. So I got the whole landowner and we went there and we counted 300 plants. So that was not known in the database as a location. And then I went on and started looking on the map and I found a tributary that ran into the same drainage system. And I thought, well, I wonder if it's uh, perhaps on this, this tributary and it happened to be public land. So I visited with the volunteer and we counted again, several hundred more. So we not only doubled the number of extant populations, but we had maybe 110 plants known and now it's more like 500. So this, I would still say is very rare, deserves to be endangered, but it was exciting to find several new locations for it. It is a beautiful trillium. Uh, Sanandra hispidula is really exciting too. This is only currently known in Jackson County, Illinois, and there are about maybe eight locations for it. And some volunteers we work with um, do a lot of long distance trail running and they cover a lot of territory. And so I have them look out for things. And one of them sent me a picture of the Sanandra from Union County, Illinois, where it has not been uh, documented. So I went there and found this scene, about 800 blooming Sinandra, and I thought, how did this get overlooked? But it was a really remote part uh, deep down in a ravine. And so that was really exciting to get a county record for a rare species, especially one that's only currently occurring in one county. Now we can say it's two, although I will say that it's, you know, the county adjacent to Jackson and the northern part of the county. So it's not too, you know, county lines are totally arbitrary. It's not too, too far from the other populations, but still exciting. Trifolium reflexum is another rare one, just three locations. It's doing well where fire is on the landscape. Um, Vitilia decipiens, I went to all those locations, just five. So that's a truly a rare plant. Hexelectra spicata was one. My strategy was to go to all the known locations for any given plant so we can really get a snapshot in time of the full story of a species. So we went to eight sites, 15 subpopulations in five counties and found it at each one, total of 487 plants of that beautiful orchid. All right, I know I'm running out of time. Let me speed up here. Heterantha reniformis went to all five locations. It was not at any of them and would have been determined, extirpated, but I found four new locations and three of them were rutted out ATV, you know, abuse. And that's mud plantain. This plant likes shallow mud water and it's being created by this illegal ATV use um, where this had showed up. So that was really kind of cool. And I guess I'll stop here, but Plantanthera flava, also another one. We found thousands and thousands of blooming plants, but only in three counties. And I thought, is this really rare? I don't know, orchids are picky. I'm gonna wait and see what happens uh, next year. Um, and let's see, too much to share with you. I'll end with the Caria aquatica. I'd never seen this tree before. Such a beautiful one. Water hickory, it's called. Um, and we found 80 mature trees. There seemed to be no recruitment going on, but we updated those, uh, that occurrences for that. So I'll have to end here, mention the, show the names here of the staff of the Chicago Botanic Garden who were involved and then here staff at Southern Illinois University. So again, that was very quick, but I hope you uh, learned a lot about the program and are inspired to help us out with monitoring for rare plants.